Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and once again we're here with Dan and this time we're going to do a fun video on cuttings. So I'm going to turn this over to Dan. Hi Zini. Do you want to show him your baby? Hi Zini. Good dog. He's a very cute dog. Go get him. Go get him. Anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Dan and let him talk to you about what we're going to do cuttings on, why, how, right. all of the good information about that. Okay, and I like to uh, start a lot of my classes, uh, I give classes occasionally, uh, with the idea that uh, there's a million and one ways to do everything. Yes. Most of them are right. Uh, some of them that you find on TikTok are really, really wrong. Um, yeah. the, and there's not just one way to do it. I've been taught how to do it professionally. Uh, therefore, that's why I'm using these things and not red Dixie cups. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't do red Dixie cups because that's what people do when they're it's, it gets expensive. It gets expensive. And you know, this thing right here, that's like, I don't remember what that, that, that was a buck and I get 128 of them. And you can reuse it. I can reuse it. I'm reusing it already, you know? Yeah. And I got same thing over here. I get 128 here. I get 100, I get 50 there. And it's just a better use of, of space. And space is at a premium in my greenhouse, which only has 97 square feet of usable space. So right now we're, we're, we're uh, debating as to how many cuttings Malay has brought. Uh, we're uh, uh, trying to figure out uh, how many is going to fit. So what we're going to do is going to fill two flats. I got a 50 plugger and I got a, a couple of 128s and we're going to fill those up and then we're going to go back inside and we're going to uh, start cutting the uh, start cutting uh, the CV up and uh, see how many it goes. Okay, so we've all. got the soil. Is there anything special you'd like to say about the soil that you use or the uh, soil The soil I use is as light as I can possibly get it. I use a uh, I'm going to say a brand name again, Lambert LM3, which is pretty darn light, uh, has an awful lot of air uh, airability in it. And I make that a little bit lighter uh, than that by mixing half of a bale with a bag of soil pep. I don't know where else this is going in the world, uh, but soil pep is basically a decomposed, a slightly decomposed ground up bark, you know, yeah. and that makes it even lighter. And I do that because I have a wide variety of stuff that I want to grow. Not only do we have stevia okay to grow but also we've got other fun stuff that wants lighter soil oh i love those like stones yeah and ups. it wants to have as light as possible soil as possible and i think with a, an automated system which i don't have up yet you know that you can turn on three or four times a day and i don't have to water them myself you know yeah i can have that happen and i need the loosest most arable soil I can get because you know, you know some things just want a nice loose fluffy soil you know and some things that you can do other stuff with that's why these lithops here that's about half perlite in there right perlite is another way to so it's another way to lighten it up, lighten yeah. it up. and uh, that's you just lighten it up as you need some things uh, it's probably a little bit better to have a denser soil so it retains more moisture uh, I try to dense up the soil by packing it so okay that's how i do it uh other places don't like poking holes for things i do the last nursery i worked at we uh i got them so interested in poking holes that they've got this little piece of plywood and they run bolts with nuts in them and they have several of them around the nursery and it's got handles on it and you simply pick that up and you go to a 50 plug flat which this is poke it down it pokes all 50 holes at once oh wow they have others over there they don't have 128 plug flats i do they have 98 pluggers they have them with 100 excuse me they have what with 98 plugs on them poke the holes they're done they're ready to go that and would save do, a lot of time uh, that saves an awful lot of time because oh, there's that go up oh, there it is and i don't want that one i want this one right now Pruners, if you take this nice, tasty little cutting here, and, they and are you tasty. put some rooting hormone on there, and you come over here and you shove it through the dirt, you rub off the rooting hormone. Yeah, how much is how much are you gonna rub off, and how much did you just waste? Yeah. I realize that it's a very minimum cost to the entire production, but you don't want to waste anything, especially when all you really have to do is poke the holes. This is Hormidine 2. This means this is 0.3% rooting hormone. 
Now, people ask me about percentage of rooting hormone yes. all the time, and I don't know anything about it. So, uh, really quickly, what's the difference? Well, I'm sure there's differences in, in other people's brands. I choose to go with Hormadine uh, 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 because I'm familiar with the product. Yes, there's other people out there that uh, use the liquid. Right. And there's other people out there that use the gel. Some people actually uh, soak willow uh, bark into water, and then they use that. And that can work. That it's can work. Okay. It's just a little it weak, works right? Works probably if it improves your uh, rooting on coleus cuttings by twenty five percent, and coleus cuttings don't hardly need any of it. Okay. So, and when I'm making money off of these things, I want to make sure I get as much use out of my space as possible. Let me go dip. We have stuff on there and it goes into 50. So you just stuck it in your little hole. Stick it in there. The hole was already ready for it. So that seems like a really short cutting. How long do you like to do your cuttings? Uh, depends upon what it is. If I've got a, a lid on it like this, Get it, doesn't, it, it doesn't want to be any taller than that. However, last week I just did blackberry cuttings. And I'm using tops like this. Okay. When I do grape cuttings, you definitely have to have the big ones. Right. You know? And you use these lids on here to make sure that you keep more of the uh, uh, moisture inside. You can do two node cuttings, which is the standard of the industry. So what's a node? Let's show me on that cutting, or maybe the next one. Okay. Show me what a node is. I'm faster. There we go. And these things are getting a little bit too. I may as well not throw that away. No, don't throw those away. They're good. Ah. Uh, so which see, ones are the nodes? That's the node right there. Okay. And Here, that's where the roots will come out, right? That is where the roots will come out. It's not always something that will come out of the nodes. Sometimes these things will come out wherever you stick the uh, hormone on. Okay. And that happens. And I don't feel like figuring out which way this is going to work. Whether which it's means... going to be on the, uh, whether it has to come out of the uh, leaf, butt, leaf axles. Which you make sure you put it right side up, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, you make sure you put it right side up. And what about leaf removal? One, what, what are your thoughts on leaf removal? On what? Leaf removal. That depends upon how much leaf you have on it already. Okay. Let me uh, cut over and see this one. I've got leaves here. I have cut the other uh, uh, nodes off. Okay. Right. We've got just the stuff on the end right here. And when you're using stuff that's really, really fresh like that, um, yeah, I just pulled these out of my garden this, you know, just before I came over yes. and stuck them in water. In water, which is a good thing. Because you don't want, once they start wilting, is that an issue? You know, on some things it is, on some things it isn't. Uh, I remember working at blah, 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 filling a uh, blank uh, on a nursery. And when we would get cuttings in uh, during the wintertime, sometimes we would get uh, 20,000 cuttings oh, wow. in a day. 20,000 of them and when you open them up very few of them are this big and some things are tough you know see this right here this it's is all wilting. Ar it's already yeah. wilting it's okay oh wait a minute i think this one is wilting because it probably broke over here yeah, yeah. see that so maybe we'll stick that in there and it'll get better i don't know and oh, one other question they had dan uh what's ahead. the difference between softwood and hardwood cuttings and when would you want to use each type um softwood cuttings are nice to have uh depends upon uh, when you're actually making wood and if you're growing stevia uh as an annual which you are because you're hauling it out every year yeah you know this is an annual you know you don't expect to go it may make wood if you use it as a house plant right but at that point in time you're thinking about no stevia probably gets best with softwood maybe semi softwood because see this that's semi soft this right? is semi soft wood and, and you don't want to uh, be blowing that stuff away. There you go. Each one of these nodes, if you can zoom in right about there, that's where the new leaves are coming out. Right. You can see that even better up here. See that? They're yeah, already, coming already, yeah. already coming out there. Already coming out. 
buds are still there, okay? Also, when you put rooting hormone at that same spot, the roots will come out at the same spot. Yeah, so it helps, the rooting hormone helps so it differentiate, right? So, you could if you want to, single node. Oh, wow. Which technically is double node because you got one on either side. You take this, you put it all the way down in so that you're covering both nodes with it. And then you poke it in here, far enough into the ground where everything has contact. Okay. So if you're really short on the plant that you want to cut, you can do single node cutting. Okay. On most things. The more of this rooting hormone, which is indole butyric acid, uh, you put on there, the better it works. You know, but sometimes it's just not going to work. And you have to now, understand that. Is it the higher that. percentage, the and Some things stronger? work really good. The higher the, the higher the number on the bottle of, of hormidine, uh, the more percentage it is. Uh, what we're using here is hormidine 2. That is point, point three percent uh, indole butyric acid. Um, if you go to hormidine 3, uh, that is 0.8% oh, indole so butyric jump. acid. It's a big jump. Um, and you, you want to use stuff like that on stuff that doesn't like rooting at all. Uh, mostly that's, uh, I understand that's the one they use when people are trying to uh, uh, propagate conifers. Oh. You know, if, if you're doing conifers, that's the one you use. Here we go. Take this. This is just how it's done. You don't want to have that too long because if it goes too darn far down there, you're going to hit the bottom. Uh -huh. And you don't want to have that you hit the bottom and have the top stick up. Where you want that moisture and that, uh, be, um, that rooting powder doing its thing. So here we so go. So Stevia, what is your experience on you know, how, how long does it take for them to root? Um, you're looking at the size of this thing right here. Uh -huh. See those cells? Yeah. See those cells? Different timing there. And it also depends on the uh, different temperature that you have inside sure. the greenhouse. Um, if you look at these wall, these uh, uh, greenhouse tables here, these are just going to be the same temperature as what you have in here. This, however, is not a workbench. Oh, what is that? Oh, this is a heated, heated sand table. Aha. I plug this thing in. I got to put a rheostat on there or a thermostat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it gets 90 plus degrees. So that's going to speed things there up. There is a heat mat underneath this uh, piece of steel right there. And that yeah. heats the bottoms up. And if you keep your moisture up here inside the greenhouse, you uh, also increase your take rate, success rate, what do we call it? There we go. See that? I got, I got a plug flat there. There's one. Yay. I'm going to take it over here. I'm going to put it right there. We're going to put some water on it. And all the way to the back it goes. Oop, come on. There. Ah, there we go. And then how often are you going to be watering these? Daily. Okay, once again, there is a million ways to do this. You know, this is one way. This is how I've been taught professionally how to get stuff done, be productive, use your space wisely. Uh, again, we could have used one of these. These are 50 plug flats. There's 150 of them. There's 128 plug flats. At some point you think, okay, this is going to turn into X number of dollars down the road, or it's going to turn into, for most of you viewers, it's going to turn into X number of stevia plants that you're going to, to keep for yourself because they're really sweet. You know, and this is 150, and it's taking up about six square feet. That's 128, and it's taking up about two square feet. Which one did you want? Just depends on what you want to it do. It depends on what you want to do with it. And whatever you want to do, as long as you have a great garden adventure, I'm all for it. So at that point, thank you for joining us. Please like and subscribe and go have a wonderful garden adventure. Yay!